Hi muckers and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all having the best day ever. Thank you so much for clicking on this video and choosing to spend even a little portion of your day with me. I really appreciate that. Before we get into this video, I'm going to keep this short and sweet. I am in so much pain today. If you want to know the full story, I'll be posting a vlog on it later on where this happened. But basically, to summarize it, I'm in Paris right now and... I have been loving the electric scooters. I loved them whenever I was in America and I, I just really love them and I really understand um, how to use them and I feel pretty comfortable and confident in them. But basically, yesterday I was driving on one of them and for some reason I kind of imagined the sidewalk was way closer to me than what it was, so I immediately swerved and I fell forward, fell off my scooter while it's going at like the full speed. I fall back and land on the scooter. You know the hard ass scooters? And I mean land right here like right above my ass and I'm not gonna show it because I'm so embarrassed but my back is black and purple today and I I'm moving like this and anytime I walk I literally walk with like a little bit of a limp night I feel like I'm walking like a school secretary it is it is so painful so if anyone has any tips on how to relieve that pain let me know because <laughs> it's bad but anyway let's get into today's video so we are going to be talking about something that is actually so unpredictable that this happened and I can't believe that it did but basically Jeffree Star went on the impulsive podcast which is Logan Paul's podcast impulsive Logan Paulsive. <laughs> and I was really shocked that this happened because Jeffrey really hasn't gone on many podcasts or many interviews as of recent because he really is to give credit where credit is due he kind of went to the yak farm and kind of fucked off and this is really new and very much so old Jeffrey to see him sitting down talking addressing everything and one thing I will say is I watched this entire podcast yesterday whenever I was out at a cafe and this podcast is good and it's entertaining and it actually shows one of the more entertaining versions of Jeffree Star that we've seen never. Like we haven't seen this version of Jeffree Star since probably the start of 2020, end of 2019. Like I mean he's back in his like petty, like catty and it was very entertaining and interesting to see this version of Jeffrey again because we've been so accustomed to the yak meat Jeffrey. And I mean, we're going to be watching clips today that stem from Jeffrey saying that Taddy Westbrook is the reason that the beauty community is dead to him saying that he never got involved in drama and that people just wanted to cancel him and Shane and it was the other people in the beauty space that were problematic. So this is what we're dealing with here. This is what I mean by going back to 2019 Jeff. And also, he talks a lot about his haters, how he deals with it, what they want from him, what he wants from them. And it's very interesting. And also, one thing I'm not going to show a clip of, but he talks about OnlyFans. And Logan Paul's like, have they ever offered you, you know, to be on OnlyFans? And he's like, yeah, they offered me a lot of money. And Logan Paul's like, oh, how much money? And it's very apparent, in my opinion, that Jeffrey is lying here because he immediately starts stressing out. And it's like, oh, you know, j just like a lot of money, just like a lot of money. And Logan Paul keeps pressing him. He's like, five digits, four digits. And then Jeffrey's like, oh, like, I won't say, I won't say money, I won't say money. And then he's literally like, six million or whatever. He says some sort of like really high figure that OnlyFans allegedly offered him like it was in the millions like five plus million six plus million and here's the thing I just know that that's not true because we have creators who are way more popular than Jeffrey who have not been offered that amount of money and here he is saying it with no backed up and he just said it on the spot but here's the thing this is Jeffrey this is 2019 Jeffrey where he's just almost like Trisha on Frenemies is the only comparison that I could say is what Jeffrey is giving on this podcast where he's sitting down and just saying outrageous stories and he's saying a lot of stories in this podcast that he has only ever said in like the Shane Dawson series the first one and maybe in a collab with James Charles oh he also goes into talk about James Charles it was really interesting to watch especially as a drama channel because I really feel that Jeffrey has kind of just faded off as of recent and this is literally like watching an unreleased 
interview from 2019. So we're going to get into it. So he talks about Star Yak Ranch. I don't really feel the need to listen to that like for you right now. I've already listened to it and he doesn't say anything that we don't already know. He's basically just so much happier in Wyoming now. He got away from the drama, blah, 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 blah. But we're going to listen to him talk about James and Jeffrey and Shane. Wait, he is Jeffrey. James and Taddy and Shane. And this is very interesting. And I just love that he's going with the narrative that he was never the one that was starting drama and he was just always pulled into things. It's just typical Jeff. It's typical Jeff. Here we go. Any other any others, Roman? Surely you have cats. No, I have eight dogs. Cat. Yeah. You are, you you're you're fascinating. I love. I have eight Pomeranians. I'm yeah. just. Oh, they're all palms. They're all palms. They all start with D. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. What does a normal day in the in the Jeffrey Sar life look like? Wake up, DM Mike, never hear back a year later. <laughs> Story that everybody um, tells. I don't respond to people at all. Oh, by the way, sorry, I haven't given my... This is the Jeffree Star on hooking up with Kanye West fall of Shane Dawson. Impulsive episode 330. So this is on the Impulsive YouTube channel. I'm watching this for fair use commentary purposes. Whew, nearly forgot that. My mom would be sweating watching this if I hadn't said that. But yes, you can go watch the entire thing. I'm just showing some clips from it and talking. Every day is different. I travel a lot. I did respond to you. I know you did. We talked for a while. <laughs> well, I, you know, I was trying to make my way through, like, the little eggplant emojis with the yeah. squirt coming out of them. Oh, I didn't know. I did not. Oh, God, no squirting. Oh, my God. And then, and then when it got to the Logan Paul, uh, like, uh, poaching, that's when uh -huh. I got mo more yep. interested. That's when I really started to, to respond uh -huh. more. All right, yeah. so you wake up, you DM me, and then what? Every day is different. I do my skincare. I look in the mirror and cry. I can't believe how sickening I am. Um, I spend hours with the yaks, with the dogs, and I create a lot. I love getting stoned, creating concepts for... I'm on year eight of my company, and I have so many more ideas. Which one? Jeffree Star Jeffrey Cosmetics? Star Cosmetics, yeah. So we started with three lipsticks, just a little dream in my little two-bedroom apartment, and it just went... It was just... Why did it go bra? People... <laughs> Here we go. Bra, why did it go Here we go. Bra? People trusted my opinion, my formula. They knew I was going to give them something good, I think, from doing makeup for so long. People respected me, which was so cool. Yeah. <laughs> I actually think that that is a valid point. That is the reason that Jeffree Star Cosmetics was so grand and received so well because Jeffrey was like especially the start of YouTube like your friend who you watched on YouTube review other products so if he was to come out with his own of course it's going to be great so I mean it was genius because I did music prior right remember I was signed to Akon and Convict Music and I've lived so many lives so to quit and give up everything and start this little company was scary it yeah, was really it's really scary launching any company is horrifying yes is anyone going to like it and yeah. then it took off um, and it was just at a time where the product I Here launched first, it was a liquid lipstick. It had never really been on the market. There's only a few brands. A product that goes on. It's also crazy to note, sorry, I don't mean to keep pausing before we get to the Shane and Jeffrey and Taddy part, but Jeffrey, his main competitor at the time of the start of Jeffree Star Cosmetics, think about how weird this is, was Kylie Cosmetics. I mean, they were battling face-to-face -face similar net worths. Jeffrey was literally up there with Kylie Cosmetics. It's insane to think about because he was the daring brand. You can literally suck a dick and it doesn't come off and you still look flawless. And I made the best formula and it's my top seller to date, yeah. So cool. It's cool. Was, was your YouTube channel a vehicle for the success of that yeah. company? So then once I launched the brand, I saw beauty started to grow on YouTube. And, I was and like, then oh, he killed I've it. Never done this. And, I, and no one at the time had ever seen me without makeup. It was very, like, mysterious, and I always kind of kept this weird, like, uh, enigma about me. So when I revealed my full normal face, which I used to be insecure about now, I could give a fuck. It was, like, shocking at the time. And then I was giving away my beauty secrets and how to actually look good, and I was just doing it different than the people at the, on the platform. When did you start wearing makeup? <sighs> like, 11? 11 years yeah. old. I don't know why. I really don't know to this day why. I just gravitated towards it, started stealing my mom's makeup, wearing it to school, very punk rock and just having fun and experimenting and I loved it. So you can't identify any <clears throat> like reason why you think you started? Was no, it in the I, nurture? I, I was there someone else in your family that you saw? We get really dark. I think maybe... Yeah, and it was also really soothing and, and just like Got something it. to go escape. Got it. And I think I hated my current life at that time as a kid that I just wanted to like transform and make my own fantasy, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and then... The hair, did you ever grow it out long? Or, uh, or... I won best hair in high school. That's when I dyed it pink. And I had like spiky punk rock hair, Liberty Spikes, the whole thing, Mohawk. 
Hi. at a 10 inch <laughs> I do think it's important to kind of show that before we get into the drama because I always think it's interesting because the reason I wanted to show that is quite honestly because he now talks about the fact on what went wrong with his company like why did people not necessarily not care about the beauty space anymore so him giving that introduction I think was important to show but anyway again he fully blames Taddy and James for the makeup world ending because that, that's not like an easy thing to just pick up you know I, so when I'm really into something like raising yaks, right, I just go full in. Uh, so I said, I need, to, I need to do YouTube, <laughs> and I studied all the beauty people at the time, and I was like, okay, I get it, but no one's doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So before YouTube got really strict, I was the first person to smoke weed during a makeup tutorial. And it was just very like, what the fuck? And I was just very outspoken and was just myself. Yeah. And then just grew and grew. And then I started doing all the lifestyle, my relationships, surgeries, doll, everything, including makeup tutorials and reviews, I did it all. You're you're so ahead of the game. It was crazy. When I started coming up and thinking I had like discovered a new format or something new or it was yeah. a new idea, it's funny because you were like final leveling. <laughs> like seriously, when I yeah. was starting, and, and and to be honest, it's a bit confusing because uh, I, I I wasn't the same generation of a YouTuber as you were, yeah. but you don't really make that much content anymore, do you? No. Or am I tripping? I upload I think maybe three or four times a month now. It's not that much. No. But I used to be like, eh, there's just so much going on too in life. This is before COVID. Yeah. Here we yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. But then now, because you're launching other uh, businesses, cringe. Is that why you what are you about to say? Do you still love it? I enjoy making content, but I think beauty overall on YouTube is is kind of dead. A little bit. Of I want to stop that sentiment. Here we have a white creator who has being someone who has been the downfall of what we examine as the beauty guru community and he's like, oh, beauty on YouTube is dead. No, it's not. It's actually very much so thriving. It's just not um, at the filled at the top with problematic white ass creators right now. Like, just because you're not at the top of it doesn't mean that it's still not thriving because it actually is thriving. The TikTok beauty community is thriving. It's then bringing up a new generation of YouTube one. Just because you're not there anymore because you got exposed for things doesn't mean that it's dead. Let's get one thing straight here. Oh, yeah. Why? Why is that? All the drama, all the craziness, all the personalities, and it was just... It, it just it, got no fun, and huh? It got so unfun. So toxic. So it got so unfun, but I think that there was the common denominator in every single drama that we talked about, which was... Anyone have any fucking guesses? We said this about every... Shane, uh, Taddy, James, Gabriel Zamora, Manny Mua, Laura Lee... All of these dramas that were the downfall of beauty all had one person involved in them. It was Jeffrey. So this is what really pisses me off because I gave so much credit to this podcast where I'm like, it was interesting, it was entertaining to hear him talk, but he just rewrites history and he, he acts like he wasn't not only just like the common denominator in the drama, he acts like he was above it and never involved in it ever, which is so not true. And unless you're watching the videos, unless you're reading the threads, you don't know that, which is why the guys aren't like, oh, like disputing him back. So, just my take on it. So fucking toxic, yeah. so dark and ugly. Ironic. All those people were awful. And they wanted All those they people wanted... were awful. Yeah, they were, but you can also look inwards a little bit too. As me, because me and Shane were the most successful. We had the biggest launch in makeup history. Mm -hmm. I was just being so straight, like man to man, not tooting my own horn, but it was so cool. And people got mad at how successful we got. And they stirred up so People many throw rocks up. They don't throw rocks down. People stirred so many things because they got mad at how successful we were. Meanwhile, they were having meetings with drama channels in the background. Maybe they were leaking information. They were talking shit about Taddy. They were trying to get her to make the James video. Why are they rewriting history here? And by they, I just mean Jeffrey. Like, I can't speak for Shane. He's not speaking right now. But, like, all he does is just rewrite, 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 rewrite. And he's like, oh, it was just so evil and dark. Because of who, babe? Because of who? And they got, and they didn't like how big we won, so all the beauty people got angry. That, and also, you didn't want any other competitors, so you were trying to eradicate them out. So as much as you blame Taddy and James right now, you were also involved in that. You, behind the scenes, were involved in it, and then publicly, you were tweeting that you were scared of James and all these different things, and that, um, it, like, oh my god, regardless of what your opinion is of James Charles, because you know I hate, loathe James Charles, for him to blame other creators, including Taddy Westbrook, and not take an ounce of responsibility is so bizarre. He was trying to get a downfall of Taddy and James simultaneously so that all the attention would still be on the conspiracy palette. So why isn't he addressing that? 
Three and try to take us down. You know, it's like a whole. It's you were like, trying to take others down. It's dark. <laughs> were you were you like seriously affected by that stuff? Like, yeah, do you find yourself a happier person now that you're? Yes. <laughs> way way happier. Guys, sure. I just got wrapped up in what everyone else was doing as well, and it was just. So you got wrapped up. So why aren't you focusing on that? You're blaming everyone else. It's like a huge, crazy, like reality show is what it felt like. The James and Tati stuff. Yeah, that was what ruined the beauty community. Mm -hmm. It's a big statement. It's a big statement to say that about them two creators and then not take an ounce of what you were involved in that too is very bizarre. Is very bizarre. Taddy and James ruined the beauty community. Who else was involved in that? Who else was involved in that? It was you. It was you. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> that was wild. And then you. That was the uh, Adam Bomb. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. When, you, when you Adam joined bomb. in, I think that's when. It, when it, you were it just was getting serious. Oh, yeah. It was really crazy. Mm -hmm. Did you ever think about doing, <laughs> like, box? So there we go. They're like, when you got involved, trying to, like, have him some ounce of taking some sort of, not even accountability, but addressing it. And he goes, yeah, it was crazy. That's all you have to say so you can donk at everyone else, say the beauty community is dead, which is not true. And then the beauty community of you and Shane is dead. And James is dead. Because no one cares about any of, like, the, the fact of keeping up with the narratives you were pushing out, just fighting with each other. It is so crazy to, to say that statement whenever it is truly doing its best right now because of TikTok. Because of TikTok being a new wave of beauty influencers. Oh, and whenever you got involved, it was kind of, it was, you know, intense. Yeah, it was crazy. That's all you have to say? Boxing with, with the people? I mean, I'm always down for that. I actually know how to street fight. I'm, I'm, I'm down for it I all. I feel like you could kick some ass. You're tall. I've been jumped by five guys before. Like, I know how to fight. Did you end up beating them up? Or beating <laughs> no, I'm mean, actually, uh, I wish. <laughs> all right, and then it goes into a sexual conversation. So what I'm going to do before we end is Jeffrey talking about haters. You fucking homo, you fucking freak. Like, people would be so vicious and bizarre. And now that never happens, honestly. It was a different world. It, there was no guys wearing makeup at the time. It was just such a different world of like, I don't know. It was vicious. And I want to talk about this because yeah. it is fascinating. Again, you, you were like the first of many things. And in that regard, yeah. I, I don't think many people were doing what you were doing back then. At all. Did it affect your identity and, and was it damaging to your sense of self? constantly being harassed because you wore makeup because you like to dress and wear your hair yeah, a certain I way. I think I had such an armor on and I was always like way too much attitude, vicious back instead of just ignoring people or like responding with love, I was vicious. Mm -hmm. Cuz I was attacked all the time. And then you go online and everyone not everyone, but you have a a fan base and this is like MySpace, right? So I've been online on social media for 20 years. That's absurd. Isn't that nuts? That's I was absurd. the first person with internet in my on my street in Orange County, 56k dial-up, which no one knows what that means anymore. <laughs> MSN, yeah. So I just started so early, like, oh wow, I can utilize the internet and make something out of myself, and no one's doing it. That's when everyone was trying to buy up www dot whatever dot yeah, com and yeah, flip yeah, them. Yeah. yeah. So I flip. just started so early. So 20 years later. Yeah, but but still, <laughs> still that vicious reciprocation yeah takes it, courage it, yeah it takes courage though because a lot of people would... it takes courage they're talking about the videos of jeffrey walking down the street just shouting racial profanities at black women and having a taser and walking up to them and just pretending to zap well not pretending to zapping but just not to them this is them currently trying to get jeffrey to address those videos. You know the ones we've all seen? They literally were just like, good on you for, you know, responding back. What? Have you seen the videos of Jeffrey roaming the streets shouting all of those, like, I, I don't even want to say profanities, like, that's where most of the Jeffrey problematic videos stem from, that era, and there's so many of them. He would literally just walk on the street and shout these things. So he's saying people were doing it to him. There's also so many videos of him where he literally would walk out of his apartment and then just immediately start shouting profanities at people. Because he was trying to get a video, because he was trying to, you know, have a MySpace moment. Why are they giving him credit for that? It's so weird. 
be afraid of the repercussions and after that yes. if someone hurls an insult at you and you're vicious back and now you're in an you altercation you may go and never wear makeup again or never feel comfortable but I was like no I always want to be myself and just be me and stick up for that so I just never change yeah you have a real courage <laughs> yeah. you have a real courage and you, you did it ahead of everyone so what do you say to people now who might be struggling with any sort of identity he has a real courage He definitely has the nerve, anyway. Well, Muckers, I want to know your opinion on this. From the drama channel, drama community, sorry, not drama channel, to the haters, let me know. Let's talk about it below. Thank you so much. I love you, and I really appreciate you being here, and please let me know your opinion. All right. But don't worry, Jeffrey, you're still the victim. Lord. Ow, my back. I was trying to do like a roll off moment, but my back hurts so much.